Catman Islands are one of the super fun additions to the 2.0 update, and honestly, one of the most unpredictable. We were all hoping Captain was gonna return, but I think most of us thought he was gonna be bringing us back to Tortimer Island and the minigame haven we were all missing so much. To find out there are additional mystery islands to visit was a fun surprise. There's a lot more to these islands than the usual Nook Mile ticket islands. So what are Captain Islands? What can you get from them, and are they worth your time and precious Nook Miles? Once you achieve a 3-star island and KK has performed, Captain will appear in his little boat at your dock. He charges you a thousand Nook Miles to take a trip to a Captain Island. Cheaper than the normal Nook Mile ticket island, but the catch is, you can only go to one Captain Island per day. Before you take your voyage, empty your pockets of items you don't need for the island. Keep your tools, but pretty much everything else can stay at home. You'll want as much room in your pockets for resources, bells, gyroids, and a DIY. Some of these islands have seasonal items that you can't get all year on your own island. Going to a Captain Island gives you a chance to restock these resources like cherry blossom petals, mushrooms, and snowflakes. Not all of the islands are full of seasonal fun resources though. Most of them that you'll find will fall into the normal island category, which are still wonderful, but lack the fun extras of rare islands. When talking to Captain, there is a 78% chance you'll find a normal island and a 22% chance you'll get a rare one. There is a little bit of an exploit. If you don't like the island you landed on, you can close the software and try again. As long as the game doesn't autosave, of course. You can pretty much see what an island looks like while you're reading Captain's dialogue before stepping off the rock. This will make sure the game doesn't autosave because you're still in the middle of like a dialogue option. At this point, you can close out of the software and start it back up and hopefully get a different island. Honestly, it's a lot of work for something you can either just time travel for or wait until tomorrow to try again. But if you're interested in gaming the system, there is a way. Rare islands that become available to you are based on the date that your character was created. Not your island's creation date, but your actual character creation date. Each rare island has a specific date associated with it. A fall island has a date in the fall, a summer a date in the summer, etc, etc. Your character must have been created on or before the date of the rare island. The Mushroom Islands date is set to November 25th for the Northern Hemisphere. Add six months for those of you in the Southern Hemisphere. Once your character passes this date for the first time, even without actually turning the game on and playing that day, that player can then find Mushroom Island. You can time travel forward an entire year to be able to quickly gain access to all the rare islands if you're okay with time traveling. But time traveling backwards will undo all of this, so you can't just time travel forward a year and then time travel back to present day to keep everything unlocked. You'll have to either stay in the future or wait patiently for everything to unlock normally. The game does try to help you experience all the rare islands once you have unlocked them. The code does not allow you to repeat a rare island until you've made it to all of the other ones first. If you're really looking forward to visiting an island like Star Fragment Island and you just keep getting every other cool rare island, just be patient. The game will allow you to experience the beautiful Fragment Rocks soon. On the flip side, you can't find that same rare island if you haven't first gone through the entire rotation of other rare islands. So if you're lucky enough to get a cool island early, you'll have to wait a bit to encounter it again. If you get a good belonging fortune from Katrina, cause you're a smart Animal Crossing player and get a Katrina fortune at the beginning of every day, you'll be guaranteed a rare island. But if your character is too new to experience the rare islands, you'll find yourself on Glowing Moss and Vian Island instead, which is technically a normal island, but it's like the coolest normal island, so it's really not a bad place to wind up. There are 11 types of islands that you can visit. Four are normal, Gyroid Island, Vegetable Island, Glowing Moss Island, and the Rainy Snowy Island, depending on your current season. And seven are rare, Cherry Blossom Island, Bamboo Island, Snowflake Island, Star Fragment, Seashell, Maple Leaf, and Mushroom Island. The fish and bugs that spawn on these rare islands follow the season of the actual Captain Island, but they do follow your main island's hourly clock. So if you land on Mushroom Island, the fish and bugs will be those available during November 30th, but will only be the creatures accessible during your current hour. You can, of course, stay on the island as long as you want and wait for the time of day that you need. Like if you need a nighttime bug, just throw your switch on sleep and come back a few hours later. The Captain Island's time proceeds as normal. This is true for everything except the Star Fragment Island. When Captain drops you off, the island's time is set to midnight. If you stay on the island for a few hours and the sun starts to rise, the stars stop. Every Captain Island you go to will have at least one gyroid fragment and one message in a bottle on the beach. The normal rainy island has a little something extra. 
There will be a normal gyroid fragment buried somewhere, but you can also find a completely full gyroid buried as well. Make sure you grab both before you leave. It's like the only good thing about this island. The normal islands will have a random DIY, while the themed islands will have a recipe that follows along with the season or feature. For example, Glowing Moss slash Vine Island will have some of these cool new furniture items using moss and vines as ingredients. The Rare Islands will have seasonal recipes that are only available during the specific time of year, and Star Fragment Island will have Celeste recipes. I thought this was going to be a nice workaround because I feel like I barely find Celeste on my island, but it turns out I see her way more often at home than I find her island. These definitely aren't the quickest way to grind out seasonal DIYs, but they're a nice surprise if you happen to find one that you're missing. Pretty much only use the normal islands for gyrate fragments and bottles, though if you're missing a certain crop, the vegetable ones can be helpful. The type of crop that appears on these islands is completely random, so hopefully you don't get potatoes all the time. The normal Captain Islands are missing a couple features that the regular Nook Mile Islands have, like bells being shaken out of trees, furniture items in trees, and wasps. But there is a 5% chance that these islands will spawn money trees instead of fruit trees. These money trees will only hold three 1,000 bell bags, but hey, that's more than the fruit sells for. And it's just exciting to happen upon. The normal islands also have a 30% chance of one rock being a money rock and a 2% chance of all rocks being money rocks. Every rare island and rainy slash snowy island automatically contains a money rock, except for star fragment island, which holds star fragment rocks. Way cooler. Anyone else wish that the star fragment trees were like actually added as a real item? I know that they were hacked in back in the day, but they looked really cool. I'm sure Nintendo probably doesn't want to pay homage to modders, but like, I'd be happy if they appeared. It's pretty obvious what special resources each of the rare islands hold. Cherry Blossom Island has cherry blossoms floating around. Bamboo Island has spring bamboo. Summer Island, that's right, summer shells. Make sure you're running around every island collecting gyrates, seasonal DIYs, money rocks, and whatever resources are floating through the air. When I ended up on Cherry Blossom Island, I had a hard time getting the petals to spawn. I ran around like an idiot for about 10 minutes, not finding anything in the air. I finally decided to get rid of the butterflies because they were just straight up annoying me, and lo and behold, cherry blossoms started appearing. So if you're having trouble finding floating resources, try clearing out the other flying items. I always assume that the bugs had their own spawn rate, but maybe the ones in the sky, like the butterflies and dragonflies, affect the petals? I don't know, just it worked for me. There you go. The rocks on Star Fragment Island have a 14% chance of giving you a regular fragment, 2% chance for a large, and 7% chance for a zodiac fragment. The zodiac fragments can be tied to any month and aren't limited to the month that you're currently in. Don't forget to run along the beaches as well and collect the fragments hanging out on the ground. On this island, you have four hours to wish on stars before the sun starts rising. I'm assuming wishes on stars work the same way as it does on your own island or even on a friend's island, so staying here for four hours is pretty useless. You'll only need to wish on a maximum of 100 stars to get the most out of them. If you want to know how star wishing works, I have a whole video that goes into deeper detail. If you land on Maple or Mushroom Island, make sure you run around shaking trees. You can get acorns from hardwood and pine cones from the cedar trees. There's also some lying on the ground for you to easily pick up. The lovely data miner who has found all of this information was nice enough to create a Captain Island calculator. It requires you to keep track of your last few islands, but it will show you the probability of experiencing each type of island. There's also cool map images of each of the islands if you're interested in that. And I did leave some specific information out, so if you really want to know everything about Captain Islands, I suggest you click on the link in the description to go check out the full website. Captain Islands are definitely worth the thousand nook miles to experience. Maybe the novelty of them just hasn't worn off for me yet, but I'm always excited to see which island I'll find next, even if it ends up being this lame vegetable or normal gyroid island. Which does kind of get frustrating, don't get me wrong, but at least I'll find a new gyroid friend. Whenever I finally collect all the gyroids, I'll let you know if I still enjoy the, the, these lame islands, especially the normal ones that are really only worth it for the gyroid. I still wish Hybrid Island returned. I have no idea why the developers thought that said island was too OP for us to experience. My hopes were up high for that island or other ones that we didn't get a chance to experience, the missing numbers from the original data mine of the regular Nook Mile Ticket Islands. I'm going to pretend that these islands are the extra Nook Mile Ticket Islands, just to make myself feel a bit better by tying up a loose end. What's your favorite Captain Island? Which rare island are you excited to finally experience? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you next time. Bye!